going on? How's everybody? What up? Let me get my camera a little better situated here so I can see it a little bit better. Let's see who's here on the comments. Live chat. Oh, all right, Captain Newbie. What's up, Russ? Tyler B said, uh, got no notification, luckily. Uh, I guess your wife reminded you. What's up, Kent? Uh, yeah, that was a fire from weeks ago. Actually, shoot, I think it was months ago. Make sure you got your, th your thumbs up. Darnell, how you doing, man? Ooh. Terry, how you doing? All right. Thing caught up. Todd, it's the time to get that smoke rolling. Troy says, sup, Dash? All right. So, I'm going to bring you guys along for a good portion of this test, all right? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to read the comments as real time as I would like. But the first thing I have to do... As you can see, Bernadette is over here, and Vicky is over here. I have a Bluetooth headphone in, um, so you guys should be able to hear me okay. Can you let me know if you hear me all right? And where my phone is, it is under the garage door, which is behind the light. So can you guys hear me all right? Joe said, hey brother, how's it going? How you doing? <clears throat> Can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up. Just just let me know you can hear me all right before I start huffing and puffing, moving the smokers around. All right. Joshua says uh, loud and clear. Joseph says yes. Taz is all clear. I'm good on hearing. All right. Thumbs up. Thank you, Kent. Okay. So now, the hard part. So, one thing about where I cook is this is in my garage. And, oh. You guys, I won't say you don't know, but my garage is a working garage. As you can see, there's a project car behind me. Um, really haven't talked much about that project car yet, and I don't know if I will. But I need to move Vicky out of the way so I can put Bernadette where Vicky is because everyone always asks me, how do I deal with the smoke? Well, I take this. This is a four foot section of black chimney pipe and a 90 degree bend. This is, or at least it was, uh, six inch round. All right, and I poke that out the window. But, first thing I have to do to get that out of the way so that I can move the key out of the way and get Bernadette back where it's going to be. All of the features is about 1,500 pounds, and you see how well they can hold on this concrete floor here. Now, I ask you to turn your attention to Bernadette here, and I'm hoping that I can do this with minimal. Bernadette is showing off for you guys. Oh my goodness. doesn't help things at all. I'm looking for a little, little stick or something to put under the bed to help make sure she doesn't roll. Alright. 
side is actually pretty okay. And we fire about the easier to clean up. So let's catch up on some comments, shall we? Oh, sorry. Okay. Alright. Let's see. I will move you guys over here. So you guys can see what I have going on. Let me catch back up. Alright. Luke Calamatis, how you doing? Gabriel, how you doing? Uh Hi James. <laughs> all right. Uh, Taylor's is hello Dash and Company. Hope you all are well. Yes indeed, Joe said I'm doing well. Having a few drinks. I haven't gotten to that portion yet. Jimmy, what's up? Uh Alright. What a beast of a smoker is right. Dash I need the Emma Molly Grill on the Volkswagen. No, sir. This is I still need that emblem. Huh, lightweight, lightweight, lightweight. You can barely hear me. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm having fun for sure. All right, so move this down. And over. All right, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to keep adjusting the camera as I'm moving around and doing and moving and shaking. Uh, which state am I in? I live in Maryland. Charge this pipe is in that opening. This is a six inch square tube here. You guys can see that. And I have my water hose. Worry about that just yet. Okay, so first thing. Give you guys a better angle. Hold on. Let's move you guys further back. All right, that's a better angle. Steven, how you doing this evening? All right. So you can see Vicky in comparison to Bernadette there. Can you guys see this this here this this piece of wood the split has a yellowish tint and this piece of split has a reddish tint this yellowish one is mulberry this reddish one is cherry it's either cherry or red oak
we're going to put these in, put a little bit of space in between them, and we're going to get them lit. See how that goes. Let's get this out of the way for a moment. Guys, remember this. This is the real gun. So this, this paint down here, or this, um, where it holds water, water basin, water can, this one holds like 30 gallons of water. That's a ridiculous amount of water. The water can't run from just about like two inches off of the bottom up until basically where this top lip is. And it runs the entire length of the, well just about the entire length of the basin to cook this here. So hopefully you guys are still hearing me all right. I will come back over here to the comments as soon as I can. And I see my fire. I don't know if you guys can see my fire down there. It's, it's not nearly as well what I want it to do. I might end up having to start some charcoal and get a good bed of coals going and then put that in there. 
show you guys what's going on actually before I do that let's goodness I gotta catch up on the car mats all right Lou Mike says hey dash looks like you're having fun yeah all right let the dragons out uh, you want to start a fire roll up with uh, Charlie's t-shirt uh, thanks Got to make my business to get a cabinet smoker one day. Yes, sir. Uh, Darnell says, do not do too much moving and shaking. Somebody's going to uh, start throwing bills. Hey, uh, I thought you were going to say somebody's going to get seasick. She's, what's up, Steven? Uh, all right. Marcus, aloha, sir. Steven and Jacqueline. Darnell. Gabriel. I wonder if the fire truck, oh shoot, I did not call the fire department. Darn it, I need to do that. I, I really should. What's up, Kurt, how you doing? My girl gun doesn't run that long. Oh, why not? Hey. Yeah, what are you doing to test fire? Um, so I have a big cook this weekend. Very good question, Nukem. I have a big cook this weekend. Um, at my daughter's school, they asked me to um, they're having a fall festival and they asked me to, to cook. So I, so far I have to do a hundred, a hundred or so pulled pork sandwiches and like 50 chopped chicken or pulled chicken sandwiches. Plus I'm going to do like a 25% overage. So I'm going to need burning that. I'm not going to be able to fit all of the pork and all of the chicken into uh, Vicky to cook. So I'm trying to see if I can get this thing going the way that I need it to in order to... Hey, Victor, how you doing this evening? I'm trying to see if I can get Bernadette going to see if I can get it done. Grumpus, how you doing? So bear with me. All right, let's see here. So you guys, I'm going to lower you guys down some more. And hopefully you guys can see that my fire is non-existent. Um, I'm going to try and light it up again. And I'm getting some uh, charcoal paper to get it done. I'm going to move these splits a little closer to each other. cheat and use my work phone to check out my 
channel here so I, I can see. So you guys can keep an eye on fire and I will be able to take a Let's try to catch up on the comments here. <laughs> Stephen, you're funny. I saw your comment about the fire department. All right, Marcus, I see you're here. Kirk, all right. My real gun was one around. All right, why not? Um, all right, so Newcomb asked, and this is a good, good, mostly starting point, but you see, I have like two little sprigs of fire here. All right. <clears throat> Usually, I stuff Bernadette, or excuse me, I stuff Bessie full of wood, and it's just like go time. I stuff her full of wood. I get the fire going, and poof. Now this wood I did actually split earlier this week. Um, so that might be part of my problem, but. This was kind of ill-planned. I was just kind of like, what, what can I do for a live stream today? And I didn't feel well. All right. Grumpus, how you doing? Brian says, got a PK grill coming tomorrow. Have you ever used a PK? And what was your experience with one? So I've never used one, Brian. And I apologize. I am a few moments behind on the comments. But I've never used a PK. There are a few folks in the live stream that do have PKs, so if you want to ask them, feel free. The only PKs I've seen being used were in uh, SEA competition events and on uh, Cuff and Stuff, Jimmy, his channel. All right. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to throw some charcoal down in there because this is not working. So I'm going to try and get, get my fire going with a charcoal base. And actually, shoot, you know what I should have done? Let's put this rack down at the bottom and put more. I can't put more wood in there. Hmm, just thinking out loud here. Uh, Newcomb, so what's crazy is OLV actually closed. Last year was the last year, but this is the closest hoodie to where I, where I was. But OLV closed last year. Um... And then the propane offset. No, sir. Last time I fired up Bernadette was for that uh, uh, cook that went wrong. Um, so, yeah. Uh, is it February yet? Kent says I might need to borrow a couple of tips for H HLSR. Um, you'll have to in uh, elaborate. Hey, Uncle Steve, how you doing? Then my fire, tell us a story. So, I, I, you know, you guys know I suck at uh, storytelling. Jimmy, I do think the wood is a little wet. Um, I did, like I said, I did split it earlier this week. And this wood has been sitting. I was about to take you out, but. So this wood has been sitting outside of my garage for quite some time. Um, let me flip this around real quick. So this, this wood has been sitting out, out on the side of my garage, uh, or in front of my garage for like all summer long. And I thought it would be fine to split, but it does not seem to be the case. So I think we're gonna have to pivot and I'm going to set you guys up a little further back. And I'm going to get, I feel like I want to get a beer at this point. But I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to get some charcoal down in here. So I have, I went to a, I went to a, uh, it was like an estate sale. And I picked up these fireplace. 
I don't start my fire this way. And the reason is, it just takes longer. Usually, I can get the wood going with the, I can usually get the wood going with, um, with the, the grill gun or the weed burner, and it's not a problem. Today, however, that's not the case. So we're gonna get some charcoal pushed up in there. Why, ladies and gentlemen, we keep lighter fluid handy for emergencies. Again, that's one I would like to use, but I'm trying to get this done and started in a timely fashion because I don't want to hold you guys all night long. Quite a good base, and then yeah, I'm gonna put you guys down a little bit. All right. Okay. Catch up on the comments. So girl was asking me what's the last time I used Bernadette uh, when I had the Aaron Cook. Everybody saying hi, Kent. Uncle Steve. Uh, girl was asking for a story. Not really telling a story right now. Uh, yeah, I have to work tomorrow. Laura, hey. Blowing it. I actually forgot my, I have a, um, a, uh, a leaf blower inside but I'll bring it out here over the weekend so this up no um this is Bernadette Bessie has rusted out Bessie has rusted out a hit tripod has a uh, tripping hazard yes I know we have one split it up in the summer of that season up yeah see that's the thing um I have more I have more wood split on the side of the house already or on the fence, but those splits are bigger. So here I was thinking I was doing better by splitting these up into smaller pieces, but what I might end up having to do is split the wood that I have on the side of the house smaller because, yeah, this isn't, uh, this isn't working and the fire is dying. Mike says, uh, Wayne says, hey guys, sorry I've been away for a while. Had COVID and it made me quite sick. Finally got over it now. That's what's up, Jesse James. I would put a fan towards the smoke box. Yep. So it's uh, I'm just letting the charcoal do what it's gonna do right now. Um, I have there's five splits down at the bottom uh, there, and I know you can't see it, and I can see it, but you guys can't because I'm looking at the my phone here, my work phone. 
But I can still see that there is some life and some fire going in there. Uh, I'm so sorry you have such a big family. <laughs> Rumpus says, you got plenty of propane. Blast the mother. Uh, Lars says, it's going to take forever. Uh, yeah, I'm not agree with Rumpus. to try to get some smaller splits hopefully everybody's doing well this evening sorry I'm not answering and replying to comments as quickly as I normally would but as you guys can see all right so let's get This is definitely more seasoned than what I have in the garage currently. So we're going to take this back to the garage and we'll get it into the fire. Hopefully you guys are appreciating this. this Alright, so the charcoal is going This 
would be when it would be great to have my leaf blower. But again, leaf blower is in the house. Hmm. Can you guys see in there? Sorry. Lots of breathing. I am feeling under the weather. Here it is. Alright. Well, I'm going to sit my happy tail back down. And we're just going to let this go. And see what it does. And now I should be able to attend to the comments a lot better. And I can kind of go from here. Okay, let me... Keep an eye on the temperature here as I am sitting here. Alright, so I have been having like cold sweats all day. I'm warm actually. But now that the fire is going, I'm not as warm. And I have also been moving around. So there's that. Alright, let me catch up on the comments. <sighs> Tripping hazard, perfect. And yeah, Mike said the fire's dying. Yep, alright. So let's see. I'm back to where I was. It is, I can't tell what time it is, but it is 9.39. Alright, so I'm about 7 minutes, 8 minutes behind um, on the comments. Um, So Wayne says, now for the fun part, I'm heading to Houston via Dallas next week. Where's the most places to stop by? Um, if you're going to Houston, um, there are plenty of folks here that might be able to help you with barbecue places to go to. But Buffy's definitely is a must do. Um, how cold is it right now? Um, it is currently... It says 57, but I'm not sure if I believe that. But I am also out here and I'm moving around, so I'm warmer. I'm warm. Jerry says, I hate that shot, my bro. It's good to see you, good to be seen. Got a couple splits under the pile you have now. I did. Um, I did. So I put two underneath. Anyone planning on doing any holiday cook smoke jack smoke jack in a uh, pot? Hmm, interesting. Oh, yum. Uh, not smoke, you know, smoke cigars. 
Yeah, can you just torch it again? Try wood, start quick. Yeah, I should have just torched it again, but I was trying to be patient. Um, and the stack closed off. No, it's wide open. Um, so you can't really see, but the the way the plate runs in the back, it runs open all the way, wide open to the back. So I had the inlet on the side of the smoker wide open, and I had the uh, exhaust wide open as well. Um, yeah, I see it caught. Uh, something in the carpool under the wood, like the whole bag. Uh, yeah. Cool. No, I am just testing, uh, Laura. So the whole thing is I have a cook that I need to do on Friday into Saturday. And I'm trying to test to see what I need to do to get this thing to work with me. So charcoal seems to work. Um, Grumpus said I've been blowing up the screen since I got here. Thanks, Grumpus. I appreciate you and appreciate that. Uh... All right, thanks Uncle Steve, I appreciate you, man, definitely. Uh, that's my pro, it's good to see you live. Yes, Jerry, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, no need for that blower for Yeah, right, as soon as I find it, that's my luck, man, that's, that's my luck. As soon as I, all of my orange extension cords, the ones that are bright and nice and easy to find, are all being used in the house. I had this black extension cord, which was up against a black hose, um, which is behind the, uh, behind Bernadette here, you guys couldn't see it, but it, it, it like blended in. I'm like, wait, that, that looks a little smaller. Um, yeah. That's worth this live will be known as the dash time played with this wood live. Yes, Victor, you're absolutely right. I played with my wood live. It was, good thing it wasn't morning wood though, Victor. Uh, Adam, how you doing? Um, Uncle Steve, hopefully, I, I know Adam told me that you he got in touch with you. Hopefully you don't mind, I gave Adam your number. Adam is somebody who I would trust to have your number. So when he was asking me questions about the shades that I couldn't answer, I passed his information along to you. I'm not echoing or anything, am I? Oh, no, I'm not. Because this is just going to be listening and see who's broadcasting. Uh, uh, Sean, what up, what up, what up, you, man? All right, I'm going to catch that. Oh, man, I'm caught up. Perfect. What's the vent? Uh, I suppose I'm sorry. What's the vent? What vent? No, the inlet has been open. The inlet is open. I'm going to open this up. So we have a good, a decent fire going in there. Can you guys see that well enough? Uh, I'll move the camera down closer. So, let's see. Can you still see me? Yes, you can. So we'll go down even lower. All right. So hopefully you guys can still see that. So the fire is going pretty well. Um, charcoal worked out, those two splits worked out. I might take these two pieces that I put down at the bottom. I wanted them down there so that obviously they could warm up. But what I might end up doing the next time I use this cooker is to put the rack all the way down to the bottom. And I thought about that after I did that last cook uh, because with having the grill, I mean, the, the, the rack so high, there's not a lot of room in there for the fire basically to burn. All right, so now one of the other things that I have to, I won't say worry about, um, one of the other things that I have to deal with is the temperature variance. So on the left side here, the fire is at 150 degrees, or the temperature is at 150 degrees. On the right side, we're at 100 degrees, or just over 100 degrees. So, there's that. All right, let's see. Grumpus is fire, 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 fire. Grumpus is on fire. Yes, he is. Let's see. 
three microphone headset. Audio is suffering. So I have a Bluetooth microphone in. Um, I'm not using the, the phone. So hopefully you can hear me well enough. Let me take that. Notes. Oh, Captain Newbie says, did you, um, Uncle Steve said, Captain Newbie, did you mention Dash in the order notes? If so, I'll throw in something special. So I try to tell you guys or remind you guys that when you place orders with Uncle Steve, if you mention my name or that you saw his information from me, he throws in a little bit extra. So, look what's up. I'm going to be able to cook on 12. Yeah, nah. Best strategy for my Gator Pit virtual smokers to start with 20 briquettes and a good, decent base, then transition to wood. All right, I will, uh, I'll keep that in mind, Victor. Again, I'm really, I'm trying to use past techniques on this cooker and everything I've thrown at it so far does not seem to have been working out the way that I want it to. So I kind of took a step back. I reverted back to using briquettes and some wood and the fire seems to be going in there pretty well. I did not fill up the water pan full of water, but I mean, for what, I have going in there which is nothing tonight um, I really just wanted to start a fire and observe what happened and it took me I mean we're at 45 minutes but it took me a little while to get the fire going uh, but this is this is some of the stuff people don't talk about people don't tell you how long it takes to actually get the fire going so hey if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button for me I'd greatly appreciate it if you could. Now, one of the things I will tell you, usually when I'm starting my fires in my garage, it is super duper smoky in here. That is not the case tonight. That charcoal and that wood that is in there, and you see, it's not very smoky in here at all. Usually you can see the smoke is collecting all up in the rafters. That's not the case. So, very not smoky tonight. Because usually what I would be doing at this point is I would be out at the at the end of the garage, outside of the garage, um, waiting for the smoke to dissipate. But that definitely is not the case tonight. I'm cool with that. So I, I, I do apologize. I'm not looking directly at you guys. I actually am using my phone to set up about 10 feet away from me. And I have my work phone so I can read the comments. So, let's see. What's the vent? Okay, uh, Jimmy, you and Dash got me in the OC shakes. Thanks, no problem. Uh, telling Jesse, smoking. <laughs> All right, Adam, thank you, sir, for popping in. Okay, so I did. Uh, Gary's his dash. Yeah. Down barbecue in the house. Uh, set, set for this fire. Yeah, so uh, fire is going. Left side, we're creeping up on 175 degrees. Right side, we're right at about 125. So the difference left and right is about 25 degrees. And I tell you what's crazy, well, the couple test fires I put through this cooker, it has almost always been 50 degree difference. Now, with that being said, when I put food in here, and Marcus actually made a comment to, he was talking to someone about this not too long ago, or not so long ago. Well, it, uh, his comment was basically saying he had a design for a smoker, and he had someone look at it, and they told him it was all well and good until he were to put food in it. And then they put food in it, or then he would put food in it, and it would disrupt the airflow, basically making it um, not very good. I think this, the disruption of the airflow, makes it cook better. So when I cook with nothing in here, it doesn't actually show me what's really, um, it doesn't actually show me a true representation. So. Can you guys hear me okay still? Um, Gabriel's giving me thumbs up. Can you guys hear me okay still? All right, there are 21, 22. 
Thumbs up. If you have not already hit that thumbs up button for me, I'd really appreciate it if you could. says Bernie that always looks what oh the head of a giant robot yeah huh. I agree if you've ever seen that movie called robots I, I really feel like these are the eyes obviously there's a split in there and there's like a like the mouth of the nose here I um, totally agree she, she does look like a robot uh, Anthony how you doing there's some logs into mimic food that's uh Pretty decent idea, actually. I'll start with night better coals, probably 40 chunks of logs. Takes 35 45 minutes before I uh, before I prep. Yep, and I saw Grumpus, he said it takes him about an hour. I just didn't actually read it out loud. Oh. That is still says I'm late to the party. Didn't burn it that burn out. No. Bessie burned out. Bernadette is the one that was giving me problems. Uh, Bessie is, she's tucked away over here. Let me show you guys, Bessie. So, here's a quick tour. This is Vicky. Okay, Vicky the Vertical Smoker. This is Bernadette. I call her Bernadette because she burns stuff. And we're moving. We're moving. So, some of you guys remember Priscilla, the Priscilla project uh, that I really just didn't didn't get off the ground this is uh bessie okay bessie has kind of been buried away uh frida is back there and there's the log splitter so i have i cleaned up in my garage so you can see i cleaned up fairly well in my garage um i had to get this i had to get those of you guys who remember the landscape of my garage well I had that pickup truck in the back of the garage. It's been a, the pickup truck is a long-term project. Really had no, I won't say motivation, but no need to really work on it. Uh, somebody asked me the other day or not so, so long ago about the double barrel cooker. There it is. It got evicted from one of the top um, garage bays there. My wife decided she wanted to clean that one out. Anyway, uh, so, the pickup truck, long-term project, no real rush, and this car popped up, and it is a more pressing project, so I have to get this taken care of. Uh, let's see, let's see, I'm trying to catch up on the comments again. Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta get caught up on the comments again. Ah, uh, Laura, you never heard me talk about Bernadette? Boy, how she got her name? All right. Uh, you thought about drilling a couple two right, two inch diameter holes, saw so on the bottom of the right side of the work pen, and you want to make a vertical steel tooth to act as vents. So, Craig, you know what's so funny? When I was in Texas with Marcus, I talked about doing some something almost that exact thing to allow heat into the cooker on this side. And then, basically, I wrote a note to myself. Actually, I did a video note, and I said something about putting, like, two holes or three holes, two holes, one hole to help get some heat up here. And I basically said that, I was gonna to have to weld in some pipe and then cap the pipe. But my fear was that the heat was gonna like, I don't know. But I did think about that, Craig. So um, yeah, that's crazy. Little fish, how you doing this evening? That is still, no, no problem. Uh, unless it's dead as cold and when we have fun, yeah, then an hour and a half, hour, hour and a half, Kurt says, yep, to get us started. 
What type of log splitter is that? Um, that is the the thousand dollar special from uh, Tractor Supply. Is what it was. It's whatever their I, I, what is their Tractor Supply brand country country line twenty five ton, um, and it works pretty well for what I what I had. I added the little shelf on it, and it makes a big difference. That's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, Marcel, yes, I, I'm sorry, but I, I know it's Marcel. I know once I see people saying Marcel, I know it's little fish, but I can never remember Marcel. I'm sorry. Now I can't cook. Uh, I see a robot. I, now I can't look at your smoke without seeing a robot face. You know, it's funny. All of them have faces. So uh, this is, you know, burning that. Bessie also had two, um, two uh, thermometers. And Bessie had a shelf, so when I put the shelf and I put foil on the shelf, so if you look back at some of my older videos where I'm cooking on 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 burnt on Bessie uh, while in the garage, when I have foil on the shelf, it really looks like lips right here, and there's a handle, and the handle here really looks like a nose. So the two eyes, the nose as a handle, and then the shelf was like the lips. So yeah. Uh, Victor says, so what's the pickup project? Turn the bed of the truck on the smoker would be cool, though I don't think that's what they had in mind. No, it is not. So that pickup truck, um, hold on one second. Laura says, no, look at me. All right, well, uh, you have a clip arrow. I don't have a clip arrow, but I do, I don't know if you, uh, I was about to put my, the, my work phone at my shirt, but I don't know if you know this, but I... The reason why I, come, I call my company or I call my channel Still Drum School for Barbecue is because I started cooking in Still Drums. So my number one drum, if you watch any of my videos, it's on the side of my house now and I do still cook in it occasionally, but that number one drum is what got me started. Um, and I outgrew the Still Drums and I moved on to bigger and better cookers like these. It's not okay, Marcel. I want to try to remember your name. It just, you know, sometimes it takes you a while. Uh, Victor, so the pickup truck was actually supposed to be Tape Tester number one's first vehicle, but he shunned his nose at it and he didn't want it. So now, unfortunately, he has a better first vehicle, which is sitting in front of me right now. Just got some Twitter a couple weeks ago. Show me the mod you did. All right. Short sure thing, Jimmy. It's the log splitter catch or the log catch. There's like another. That's like 80 bucks with this tray. So it sets up. So you stand there on that side and you put that there because what ends up happening is when you split around, inevitably half of it is going to fall on the ground. So what you do is you put that or you make that round fall onto that tray and then you're not bending over as much. It is a, uh, it is a lifesaver to say the least. Next year, I might do okay. Oh, Mike said he's his own last player. More power to you. Any upgrades on burning that? Nope. Yeah, I do have a cold, Laura. Uh, can you can you hear it? I do have a cold. Uh, I, you might have missed it when I was talking about it last Thursday. It was raining here. And taste tester number two went to school without a hat on, and his hair was wet. And uh, when he came home, he was fine. But Friday, like Friday afternoon, he started exhibiting signs of a cold. And all weekend long, he was real lethargic. So he was sick on Saturday. Uh, taste tester number three got sick on Sunday. My wife also got sick. And then taste tester number one and I were sick by Monday. So I have been um, one of the last two kind of get it. Uh, we went, got COVID tested on Monday afternoon, negative. And, um, but it's some old BS with, with school, so we can't send her back to school just yet. Uh, Newcomb, you know, they win some to lose some. So, Craig, 
Um, the reason I would put a cap on it is so that grease couldn't drip into it and get into the fire and cause a grease fire. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate it. You saw how I glanced over that, right? Just in one, in one ear and out the other. <laughs> yep, exactly, Laura. I started with taste session number two. He gave it to number number three. I, I don't say I kind of expected, but number two and number three are two. Number one and two share a room, but they are on opposite sides of the room. So, but number three got sick, then my wife got sick, then number one and I got sick. So, but it has just hit me pretty hard. Um, like I said, I haven't been sick in a year and damn had So being sick sucks. All right, so our splits have burned down. And at this point, I'm not going to reach in there with my bare hand. I know that's silly. So I'm going to use a fire cooker. I'm going to put this work phone down somewhere where my bird. We're going to get this up here. This should not take long at all. It's like... insulated so actually brought out infrared thermometer and I'm holding it there on the top of the cooker it's at 130 130 degrees so that's not really going to warm up the wood <coughs> excuse me it's not really going to warm up the wood to the point where it'll get it ignited pretty quickly so Putting the wood underneath of the fire for right now seems to be working. Um, this whole firebox is insulated, so putting the, the wood on top now, I might just stack a whole bunch of wood up there. And actually what I might do is take some of this wet wood and put it over there right now. Wow, fire jumping. And you guys are going to need to keep an eye on that for me. Because the last thing I want is a fire going from the wood that's on the top of the damn smoker. So. Dale, um, not completely filled with water, but there is water down in the smoker. Oops. The MS hadn't been over too much paper packs yet. Absolutely right, Victor. So the thing is, I know that there's no, um, there wasn't much ash dropping down just yet. So I was hoping, but it did help. You guys saw that 
putting the splits underneath the fire did actually help and they did light um, pretty good. How long should your wood splits be apparent? What do you mean be apparent? And uh, to your, I wouldn't catch this fire on top of my firebox. Yeah, so Dale, if your firebox, so the firebox in, in uh, Bessie is not insulated and if I leave wood on there too long, it will catch on fire. But this is insulated. So I, I won't say I don't have to worry about it. Smoke rings and grill marks as I'm in the building. Um, so does anybody else do this? I mean, I know a lot of people preheat their wood. I've spoken to a lot of people about preheating their wood. Um, it's just been one of those, it, it's a thing. Either you do it or you don't, kind of. But my temperatures are kind of getting where they, I need them to be. And to be completely honest, this isn't, it doesn't look too bad. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is once I get up to that 250 degree mark on this left side, I'm going to open up the smoker and kind of see. But I can look out there right now. I don't see any dirty smoke. I was seeing dirty smoke last time. So I think... The key with this one. Uh, how long should your wood splits be compared to your firebox? So these splits are about 18 inches long, and my firebox. And actually, I'll, I'll take a, I would stick a tape measure down in there, but I know what's going to happen is it'll burn. Ask me how I know. Um, so let me find a tape measure quickly. Apparently, allegedly, and then I'll take off four inches because it's two inches in the initial part of the back. All right, tape measure required. And my firebox on this particular is rated about 24 inches. So, with that being said, the depth, the actual internal depth of the firebox should be rated right 24 inches. Um, so, again, two inches. From the front and two inches from the back. Yep, rated right right just under 24 inches. Um, I know I've burnt a tape measure before doing something similar. I don't know why I didn't think that that would be the case, but yeah. So obviously, if my splits are 18 inches in length, They'll fit inside this firebox, which is 24 inches in depth. Burning much cleaner than that for sure. Yeah. So that also could be, like I said, um, much smaller splits and less less wood in there. Create uh, my wood on top of my offset firebox with fire. Um. So, TOTL, the problem is this is an insulated firebox, so it's not going to get as warm as a non-insulated firebox will, or like an offset, which is, it'll get warmly hot. I just checked with a infrared thermometer the temperature, and let's see here. So, right there, if you can see, you guys can't see the, the dot. can't see it but I can so I'm holding the thermometer on the outside edge and it's showing a, a temperature of 275 degrees right here on this on this um, corner there if I put it in the middle word of the door it shows 102 degrees that is probably going to hold true to where the wood is in the center of the uh, of the of the firebox there on top this outside edge is going to be the hottest point and that's showing 200 degrees so it'll help but it's definitely not going to be enough to get the get get a split ignited oh Dale says he sees the dot do you think it's harder to maintain a high temp fire or low temp fire no uh Kevin high temp fires are always going to be easier in my opinion because you can just throw the beans at the fire open everything up and as long as you have enough air 
you will be able to maintain that fire temperature. When you have a lower fire, you have to manage not only the air, you have to manage your fuel to make sure that you don't have too much of one or the other in order for it to, to run away. Um, Bernie, that is like the Phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah, we're going to see. It's just been one of those things where I've been relying on, on Bessie to carry the load. And because I can't rely on Bessie any longer, I'm going to have to figure out what I need to do in order to, to, to get Bernadette to do what I need her to do. And I think one of those things is just going, is going to be me having to slow down and use less wood, use smaller splits, point blank. Victor says, good luck, best everyone. I have to get up early for fishing. So I'm off the bed. Well, have a good luck. Uh, have a good evening and good luck tomorrow, Victor. Thanks for popping in. I hate when my temps run away. I'm offset. Yeah, Dale. It's it's far easier to ramp temperature up and then kind of maintain and, and, and I think and, and drop the temperature down than it is to uh, reel it in after it runs away. All right. So my temperatures still holding true at about two. Uh, 50 degree difference. We're at almost 250 degrees on the left side. We are at like 240 on the left and on the right we're sitting at. Well, actually, she was running away a little further now because on the right side we're just over 175, so like 180 ish. So we're more than 50 degrees at this point. Just about. Dale says, I just hate. Uh, using small splits. Yeah, but you know what? If I'm really thinking about it, I'm using the small splits at the same rate that I will be using the bigger splits. So I can't really be mad. And I have a lot of small, or I have a lot of splits already on the side of the house or on the fence. So in my driveway. So what I might just need to do is take those splits that I already have and make them smaller because the the, the rounds that I have in the, in the driveway that still need to be split they're too big and they're too wet um, as apparent by the wood that I had down at the that I tried to use earlier it, it didn't it didn't make light. but my fire is doing well and Still burning a little dirty, but that's burning a little dirty. I can smell it, but it doesn't look too bad. And can you guys see? I don't know if you guys can see the steam. That is steam. So a lot of times people will say, oh man, that's it's burning dirty. It's it's a dirty smoke. That's steam. I don't I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I can hear the steam. I can hear the steam. Get you guys set back up back here. Uh -huh. what is we cleaned it in the bus. That's the dad one short. All is hot. Let me go ahead and clean. So these plates, grease, grease and stuff, that's what we put. And the only way or time to really clean them is after they're hot. So at this point, Smoker is, I'm gonna say up to temperature, but over, showing over 250 degrees ish would be when I would steam clean smoker. Steam it before. All right, get the heater down in here.
That is it. That'll do. As far as the uh, interim steam cleaning, if you will, I'm gonna get something to wipe my hands. But usually, I'll let the temperature run away a little bit more and get up to 300 degrees or so. And then I will steam clean it and get the temperature back down to 225, 250. And then I will get my fire going. Or, excuse me, not get my fire going, but I will. So hey, if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button for me, if you could, please. But so far so good. I really, um, I really think that uh, that she's liking the smaller splits. You gotta run small fires and keep the flame to a minimum uh, to maintain low temps. Yep. KB, no food, just testing tonight. While you're going to build your own smoker, uh, when are you going to build my own smoker? So, um, it's one of those things, Mike, where I have the, I have the want, I just don't necessarily have all of the tools to get it done. Um, because if I do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really, really do it. And I don't have, like, I really need a plasma cutter, um, which is high on the list of things to want, because I just know that cutting a propane tank with a uh, cutoff wheel is just not something I want to do. So Dale says, is there an event for your exhaust? So Dale, I'm trying to see here. I'm up, I'll just get up, out here. up here, this is where the exhaust is. Um, I don't know if you can see that, yes. So I'm trying to get it in frame. So right here is where the exhaust is. I have a, it's a six inch tube that runs is a 90 degree bend and it runs out to a four foot piece of black stove pipe. So that stove pipe runs out the window. So that's why you can't see. And actually here, I'll do this. So you guys can keep an eye on the exhaust. I'll move this up so you guys can see a little bit better. But all of that that you see, and hopefully you can see above my shoulder here, that is steam. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm not seeing it very well on my phone. Uh, do you think converting the high poly steam is still expanded metals for the shelves? Um, too far. Uh, so tired of finding this. So, Russ, I would love to do that if I was funded by like online metals or something. It is so damn expensive to do anything in stainless. And I won't say the rust comes into ter territory, but it really does. Um, I try to spray, spray this thing down with pan often, but it's one of those things, it'll be slightly rusty when I start. And then once I put food on it, of course, the grease, you know, takes up and makes it, makes it look all black in there. So it doesn't really matter. So Kevin said, throw some biscuits on there, to test heat distribution. So I did actually look so I see Sarah is here. Um, I did look for biscuits. They did not have biscuits in the Sam's that I was in. So I went to Sam's purposely. I, I went in there for like one or two quick things and I was almost done. And I turned around and I said, if I don't go back and look for these biscuits, I'm going to have my head chewed off. So I did go back and look for biscuits. They did not have any. So um, <laughs> Sarah, there's your, your answer. Captain Newby says, not the biscuits. Meatloaf. No meatloaf. I can't cook meatloaf right now. We can see more gooder. That's what's up. This is making me hungry. Need to go microwave a couple hot dogs. All right. Uh, Tyler says, car. Geo. What? Bring me one, please. This rent plasma cutter from Home Depot. Rent plasma cutter? Man, B. I don't know about that. I didn't even know that was an option. 
option one and two, what kind of respectable man rents tools? I want the tool. I want to own the tool. That's you know all part. Sir says I actually couldn't find biscuits at my stands the other day either. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was one of those things where they had them in for a little while, and or maybe they'll be coming back out around the holidays. I don't know, Sarah. All right, so my temperature has kind of tapered off. So we're sitting at 200 degrees here. Now I did, you know, rinse it down. That makes me think I need to. Now the fire's been going pretty well. Oh, you know what it is? I added more cold water. That'll do it. That's why the temperature hasn't come back up yet. Always think about what things you've changed and don't start fiddling. So I added more cold water. And we are at a 50 degree variance between the two um, thermometers, again, left and right. So this one's sitting at 200 degrees and this is at 150. All right, uh, we're close enough to start dropping in uh, hits to Santa. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't know, Grumpus. That's one of those things I kind of, I'm either going to be cheap and buy a cheap one for myself to kind of get started, or I'm going to ball out and buy like, like eight hundred dollar, nine hundred dollar um, plasma, and I don't want, I don't, you know, my wife, I don't want her to spend that much money on plasma. Though I would love for that, but no, I can't ask for that. Izzy says, "Fire, fire, 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 fire." Yes, <laughs> but I got focus by cheesecake. Nice. The air inlet is wide open. Also, yes, uh, it is wide open. No, the air inlet has been wide open, Russ. That didn't change, so that shouldn't really affect anything the effect was me putting more water in there the water is going to bring down the temperature of the water that's already in there so a lot of guys always ask me why do you put water into your smokers the water acts as a heat sink so what happens is once you get that water up to temperature it will help to maintain your temperature like when i open the door people will say why do you open the door so long well the water is staying warm, so as soon as I close the doors, it'll get back to temperature within like moments, like three to five minutes, it'll be right back to temperature because the water is so warm. The water doesn't cool off just because I let the hot air out. The water is being heated from the heat, um, from the, the heat and smoke traveling underneath of the cook chamber. So the reason why the temperature dropped is because I added cold water. And I can see the temperature is already starting to climb. So if I had to guess, the temperature is probably going to get up towards that 250 degree mark on this left side. And I'm I'm not mad at this cooker right now. Uh, what about using white bread in uh, test the smoker? I might. I don't know. That would involve me having to go back in the house. Izzy says, what's your dream smoker? Um... I have always wanted a Lang double 84, double 108. Um, yeah. But there's so many other smokers out there and cookers out there that I don't even know about that are just like little mom and pop, um, um, I don't say organizations, but mom and pop places that don't ship around the country that aren't worldly renowned. So I'm sure there's someone or something out there that I would love. But to be completely honest, I also um, definitely really, really like the Lone Star Grill, the double cabinet smoker that they had. I really, really, really like that one as well. Said I rented one uh, plasma cutter from Home Depot with 39 bucks for the day. Well, Harbor Freight has a Chicago electric one for 700. Just like when your temp spikes when your water steams out. Uh, yes, indeed. I can definitely attest to that one too, Russ. Um, I used to try to, like, I used to try to, when I was cooking on the drums, and I'm like, man, why is my temperature running away? And then I'd look down under the meat and I'd see that all the water in the water panel was gone and evaporated. And I'm like, damn it, there it is. And I'd have to pull out the the food, pour in another gallon or so of water, and it'd be boom, right back, right as rain. Uh, Izzy says, a Lang is a dream smoker. Have you seen the mill scale? 
the real scale. I think I have seen the real scale um, hookers. My next pit is going to be an LSG or a workhouse pit. Um, so I would love to, you know, get in touch with, I, I spoke with the Chris, the owner of Lone Star Girls. Um, he kind of was like, hey, uh, let me recruit and figure out how I can, how I can do something with you. But that was a little while ago. Uh, I haven't heard much back. But uh, workhorse pit, I can't say I've ever heard of them. Uh, someone I did or a company I did hear about recently was Primitive Pits. There's a guy who's doing barbecue, uh, I won't say not too far away, but it's like 45 minutes away from my house, an hour away, but he's only like 15, 20 minutes away from my job. And I went in there and it, the food was okay. Uh, I'm not going to say oh, it was like it was something I had in Texas. It wasn't. Um, it, was, it was a little overpriced, but it was priced accordingly because I know what the prices of things are. So, with that being said, um, it, it was, it was okay. It was okay. Workhorse Pits from Georgia, okay. Well, Sarah says she's going to be getting a commercial Southern Pride. Nice. So the only problem I have with the Southern Pride smokers is they're not true wood burning smokers. They're a propane assist. So basically your heat source is coming from propane and then you put wood into a box and it kind of smokes and smolders like a like a smoke box on a gas grill. That, that's kind of how the easiest way I can or a, like one of those um, like a chip or a chimney box or a, a chip box that you can put on the propane grill. Workhorse Pit and Primitive Pits are sister companies. Ah, see? I knew, I knew there was a reason why I had heard of Workhorse Pit because I went to Primitive Pits website and I think they mentioned Workhorse Pits or something like that. But I'm like, sounds familiar, but I'm like, I don't know. But yeah, Primitive Pits is the one that I had heard of, I will not say more, but like I said, there's a guy who does barbecue in my area that uses a Primitive, excuse me, Primitive Pit. Alright, hey listen guys, if you haven't already, please hit uh, that thumbs up button for me. I greatly appreciate it. There are, I can't tell how many thumbs up there are. Uh, uh, workhorse or smaller pits, okay. I don't know if you can get out of here yet. Smoke smoke rings are gorgeous, yeah. Uh, Shirley Carpentation makes some pretty great smokers too, and they charge a lot less than you would expect. You got older in like three years in advance, so I'm hoping to have mine by the end of 2022. So, Eric, um, funny story about Shirley Fab. I know someone that has ordered a Shirley Fabrication Pit. He ordered his Shirley Fabrication Pit two plus years ago. He has been waiting for 22, 24 months. And I mean, it's just one of those things where I would love to support a company like that. But if you have enough orders, you, in, 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 in my opinion, I would think that you could, you know, build up your staff and make things a little bit better or train some more folks or something like that. Because you still continuing to take orders to me, it, it's almost like not right. You know, I want to. I want to under promise and over deliver. I don't want to under promise and barely deliver. Um, so, DMV Barbecues says, What's up, everyone? Not better late than never. Yes, indeed. Uh, Dale said, I live in Atlanta and work for Pitts location about 45 minutes from where I live. Nice. Mike said, How much do you think between a 50 gallon and smoker to behind with a warming box, warming rack on the Sasha Coast? That's the thing, Mike. It depends on where you are and who's making it for you. Um, I don't know. I can't tell you that because in your area, labor might be less expensive. In my area, labor is more expensive. So by default, the same person is going to put the same 40 hours into. So let's say your welder is charging a rate of $50 per hour and he puts, you know, 10 or 20 hours into that smoker, right? If I'm in another area and that welder has a labor rate of $100 per hour, and he's putting in, 
you know, um, 25 to, to 50 hours on that smoker, by default, that one's going to cost more, even though the material cost could be the same. So it's going to, it's going to be contingent upon the labor rate of the builder to what your final cost is going to be. And that's going to be con um, conducive to where you're, you are geogra uh, geographically. Uh, looking at the fat stack, uh, I think it just moved to Tennessee with Jeremy Yoder. Okay. Uh, Izzy says, Mike, $4,000 plus. Workhorse fits and perimeter fits. Isn't it the same guy? Who has a YouTube tutorial channel? All right. Tutorials. I'll have to look at that. All right. So, my temperature is sitting at 225 degrees. Hmm. Not that that's really, really bad or a bad thing, but my temperature on the left side is sitting at 225 degrees. Can I deal with that? Yeah. Do I want to deal with that? Not at all. I would like to get this up to 250 or 275 degrees because if I do this at, if I cook pork shoulder at 225 degrees, it's going to take all damn day and night. Uh, all right. DMV said I should receive my work for a fit in November. Nice. Jeremy Gilder is in Kentucky. All right. I guess the same Jeremy Gilder is in uh, Gilder Smokers. He makes fits reasonable prices. Yes. So, Russ, um, I watch Alan's videos, and I have been watching Alan's videos for quite some time. The thing with Alan is he's in the middle of nowhere in Louisiana. And in order for me to get one of his cookers and then have it brought or sent here to where I am in Maryland, it's going to be crazy expensive. So, and then one of the other things too, because of the fact that Alan is making smokers and selling them via YouTube, he has a decent following. With, again, that being said, he is booked out for quite some time. Okay, Jeremy Yoder is the mad scientist. All right, so I'm like, I thought I remembered his name, but I wasn't sure. I didn't want to put, I, you know, the mad scientist as in the same boat as in, um, as Jeremy Yoder, because like I said, I didn't know that Yoder was any relation to the Yoder barbecue company. All right, so my inlet is wide open and my temperature is still sitting at 225 degrees on this left side. I would like it to get a little higher. We are at 1034. Let's get the fire and see where it's going. All right, it's starting to die down. So what I'll do is I'm going to add the two splits that were down in the bottom. Yeah, Izzy said, long drive at Allen. Yep. B said, my brother charges beer and barbecue. Well, good for you, B. Jeremy, build it up. Wish it fast as well. Yeah. For Jeremy. His partner's in fast tag. Ah, okay. Crack the door a bit and see if the temperatures rise. So, Brokus, the temperature is rising already as soon as I put that lit in there. 
Um, give him a bunch of smokers. El Barrio, how you doing? So, um, yeah, Grumpus, if I crack the door, what's going to end up happening is all that heat that I really want to travel into the firebox, it's going to come out with the, 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 you know, this way. And I know more air will help get that fire up, but also opening the door will allow a lot of that heat that I want to travel this way to escape this way. I mean, it's, this is weird. I am looking here and here and not over there. So I feel like I'm not talking to you guys. Alex, he says, hi all. So I got my, my temperatures up to 200, almost at 250 degrees, uh, which means there's hope that I can get this cooker up a little warmer. Hmm. I think what I might end up having to do is throw three splits down at the bottom and throw three splits onto the fire at a time and that will hopefully get that temperature up. We're going to see because if I can put three splits down at the bottom and they'll get warm and then throw the next three splits onto the fire, um, I think I'm going to I put two. So let's put a third. guys can see the fire. The fire is, is doing pretty well. And Rumpus opening up the door there. We'll see what it does. But I know the temperature typically goes up momentarily. <clears throat> I bought 40 rounds of 40 pound. I'll pull it. <coughs> 60 freaking bucks. KV says, what, no drink tonight? So a lot of times, as a rule, KV, I don't drink when I'm cooking. Though I'm not cooking. I did have a couple beers earlier, but you're right. I do need a beer. I'm going to get a beer. Be right back. This is the advantage of having a beer fridge. Jonathan says, is she still burning dirty? No, not burning very dirty right now. And I won't say the reason, but it's not burning dirty because I've been using smaller splits and also putting the splits into the bottom of the firebox there so that they can warm up and ignite and I won't have such a dirty, a dirty coming up temperature fire. As he says, how many inches are your splits? They're roughly like between 18 and 20 inches. The firebox depth is 24 inches. Don't want the shot in the blue hook, yeah. The bar said, so, hey, Dash, what's the name of that state park uh, that you did a catering video set up? No, that place looked nice. The place is called Patapsico. Do not ask me how to spell Patapsico. I just know that's how it's said. It's Patapsico, I believe it's a state park, um, but there are multiple Patapsico locations in and around Baltimore. Bessie is over my shoulder. Chuck, how you doing this evening, man? It's been a minute. Bessie's over my shoulder. She's behind me. I actually did a little tour 
I had Bessie as well as Priscilla tucked away behind me. Rob's Backyard Barbecue. He says, I'm new to this channel, so what's good, everybody? This question. Is it better to have a custom-built smoker to hold heat, or does it matter? So, Rod, that, that's, a, that's a rather broad topic or question, because if you have a custom-built smoker to hold heat, it might hold heat very well, but it might not cook very well. It's one of those things where you kind of have to go down a specific design path, if you will, and you'll have to figure out what you're going to do from there. Um, so that is rather, rather vague. And that's on first why. Uh, no, don't do it. Don't talk about it, Laura. So the splits that were down at the bottom have caught. And I don't know if that's a bad thing because, excuse me. The burn is okay. And my temperature was getting closer to 275 degrees. I'm gonna let that be for a couple moments. And I'll just keep an eye on the temperature. Hey, uh, oh, dear, thanks. Um, Steven says, smash the thumbs up. Thank you, sir. Grumpy says, thick metal rules. Yes, indeed. Chuck is good at brewing beer professionally these days. That's what's up, Chuck. Glad to hear you are doing something you like to do. Can you guys hear that ticking or dripping? It sounds like it's dripping. Excuse me. I hear a pop in the stack trying to get out, yeah. All right, so Taylor has arrived. You don't necessarily have to have a custom made smoker to have a decent insulated smoker. Insulation helps the, uh, keep heat even, but usually comes at a cost in materials. Insulation or thick, or thick metal is a good way to go. So this smoker is actually built of rather thin metal. I think it's probably eight inch steel, but it's insulated versus some of those bigger offset smokers, pits that you can get. They're built out of like half inch steel, a uh, half inch cold roll. And the half inch thick metal will do the same or similar as some of this thin metal that's insulated. Um, so check that out, the temperature is getting up to about 275 degrees and I don't mind it. So I think I might take those three splits that are down at the bottom. Actually, you know what? Before I take those three splits down from the bottom, I'm gonna leave them be until the temperature starts to dip. And we'll see what the temperature does. We're just gonna watch this. Because this might be, that might be the key. Is to have two fires going? I don't know. But to see this wood that's on top, it's not even really warm. Let's see if I can. Uh, this split actually is sitting at 265 degrees. This one over here is 90. That one here is 132. So on this front edge, can you guys, hopefully you guys can see the laser. The front edge and the back edge, maybe they're warm enough to actually warm up some wood. 
Maybe they'll warm it up to the point where they won't catch fire either. But I like the fact that the temperature is at 275 degrees. That gives me hope. That is the temperature I like to cook at. <laughs> Chuck said I hear popping the crickets. Yep. Hey Dash, can Zen in the smokestack uh, help keep the temps down? I'm not sure about that. So, uh, I haven't really seen, like, it's not restricted. So if it were restricted, like if it necked down, then it might cause a backup or a bottleneck, but it's not necking down. So the volume should be, you know, the volume of air being passed through it should be honestly relatively the same, but should be, shouldn't be an issue. Uh, let me send you pure from Tom Cole. I have some. I have some, Jimmy. And actually, like I said, I went to urgent care and actually do prescribe something, but I was the last person to get sick, and I didn't actually start feeling sick until yesterday. So this is only really day two for me, and I mean, I felt like garbage yesterday. I felt better this morning, but you know, of course, when you're sick, I'm sorry, when you're sick, you you feel worse at night, and that's it. Like, I've been taking two showers a day, like, trying to break up the, the mucus, and like, last night, I was, I laid down, and I felt like I had a fever, but I didn't have a fever. I always feel like I have a fever, but I don't. But today, I was, like, I had cold sweats. Last night, I actually woke up in the middle of the night with cold sweats, and I'm like, oh, great, you know, I, 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 like, maybe my fever broke, and my wife swears, she's like, whenever you think you have a fever, you never do. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just my hands are normally warm, and then when I'm sick, they're not warm, so I think I'm, I'm, I have a fever. I don't know. But, all right, so the temperature's still sitting home pretty steady at 275 degrees. Uh, I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this at all. Um, we are, shoot, it's 1049. So first, I'm going to take a moment to say thank you guys uh, who are here. Uh, he has a cured mason jar. Yep, I sure do. I have some high proof mason jar stuff too that I've been keeping. I've been holding on to it. Mm. Only for special occasions. What the temperature is holding actually is climbing just a little bit. It's a little bit past 275 degrees on the left and a little over 200 and a quarter on the right. I can definitely deal with that. Definitely deal with that. Um, the, I won't say the only thing now is how can I get it warmer? Because what I like to do is smoke everything at between 250 and 275 degrees. And then once I wrap everything up, I like to increase the temperature to... Well, I maybe I can switch to charcoal at that point if I really want to get the temperature warm. Hmm, I don't know, something to think about. Because I have and do use uh, charcoal baskets with the smoker as well, and uh, the temperature will will. Uh, can you guys see? You can see it. Yeah, you can see the charcoal basket up there. Something to think about. Thanks, Steven. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate both of you doing that. Uh, Samuel says, what's a good length of time temperature to smoke baby bats? So, the length of time is going to depend on the temperature where you're cooking. I normally cook my baby bats at about 225, 250 degrees, and it could take anywhere from four to six hours depending on, you know, what temperature you cook them at, what temperature you finally cook them at. Um, the fluctuations in your temperature are going to determine how long it takes. And there's, there's, there's a saying I have, is I don't cook the time, I cook the internal temperature. So with baby backs, you can kind of temp them, poke in between the bones, and you feel for doneness, you feel for a temperature range. You know, some people want their ribs at, 190 degrees, some people want them at 205 degrees. It's, it's all contingent upon what you like and what you want. So you're going to have to figure out what temperature you want to take those ribs to 
and then you'll have to feel for doneness, your particular um, bit of doneness. Katie Smooth says, have you uh, found anything or technique that helps make unloading full cambro from truck beds easier? Pull them off the truck bed. Um, so I put my cambro in the back of Vanna. Vanna is my cargo van, and Vanna is an E350, so it doesn't sit as high up as a as a um, as a pickup truck does, but uh, it does sit up rather high. Now, one of the things I would worry about from putting food in a cambro in a pickup truck bed is it bouncing around in the back and my food collapsing and falling on, on itself. On the, well on things lower. Mm. Sarah, yes, Camero does have a special dolly system, but that dolly system is, is ridiculously expensive. It's one of those things where, uh, so the temperature is climbing, we're at almost 300 degrees. And that's probably just because those splits that are down at the bottom have like fully caught now. Uh, I guess if I wanted to contain the temperature, I could close the inlets a little bit, but I'm gonna let it be. Um, this cook that I'm doing over the weekend is just chicken and pork. If it gets up to 300 degrees, I'm not gonna be mad at it. Um, if it were brisket, something more, more I don't say tender, but more pickle, I probably will worry about turning the temperature down. But I actually uh, it rolled right out and over. I actually welcome the higher temperatures. Because that'll help me get my cook done faster. Alright. Everything like that. Okay. So I am going to get these clips that are down at the bottom. Alright, Grumpus, I'm going to leave a little crack in the door, and the way my heat and smoke is going, because of the fact that it doesn't run, like if my door were open this way, and all the heat and smoke were being drawn in this way, then I wouldn't worry so much about leaving the door open. But when I leave the door open, the heat and smoke escape. So that's why I always close the door. I know the temperature is about to rock it up. Yep. There's that 300. So at this point, if I wanted to tamp it down a little bit, I could or would adjust the inlet. But I'm not worried about it. Kind of a fact finding mission right now. So we're kind of all watching this thing together. Jim said, just found a camera for five pans. Here, 20 bucks for it. What? That's awesome. Mm. Stop it, Steven. Don't even mention that wide word. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy. <clears throat> See what happens when I actually slow down and pay attention to what's going on. Folks are just trying to throw the fire and get it started and keep it moving. All right. So one of the things I learned is uh, get a bed of coals going. Get the bed of coals going, and then get the get some splits put on top of those those coals. And the temperature is up there. So I'm seeing a little bit of smoke up at the top, and I don't know if you guys can see that. And 
I'm kind of thinking it might be, it doesn't look too, too dirty. And let me feel it to see if it's, No, no, that's, that's moisture, that's steam. So let's open it up, look in here. Oh yeah, hopefully you guys, yeah, you can see the steam all down in here. And you can hear it, can you hear it? I can see it rolling in the corner where the where the hot work where the heat hits that edge. What? Doing pretty well. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. Uh -huh. Here was his dash. Why aren't you drinking? I, I had a beer in my hand. So, Gabriel, I talk about it from time to time. Usually, when I'm cooking, I don't actually drink. I have a little against it. I have had some cooked on my body. But I do have a beer fridge. And I will get another beer. I had a beer a little earlier. And I finished it. I got those I was talking about earlier. I went to an estate sale and I got two fireplace kits. And I really only wanted them for those things, the tongues there, but they came with a whole like tray and ash and brushes and stuff like that. But yeah. Oh. Uh, Brooklyn says, so what are we trying tonight that's different from your norm? So normally I would load the fire box and get the fire rare and it going, and then I would kind of just go off and do something else. One, I'm sitting here tonight actually watching what the fire is doing, the reactions that it's doing. So Rumpus, um, I put had three splits down at the bottom kind of warming up and preheating. When I had the three splits, the temperature got higher than 275 degrees. Now that's good for me to know for when I'm trying to finish, when I have everything in foil and I'm trying to finish everything, but I might just have to stick to two smaller splits, you know, in, in the coal bed, in the fire, and then two smaller splits underneath the fire to keep the fire going. But when I took the two splits or three splits that were underneath the fire preheating and put them right on, the temperature went right up to 300 degrees. So now if I wanted to tamp this down, I could close off the inlet. But I know if I close off the inlet, just the way that this thing breathes, it'll, it'll burn dirty. So I think I'm gonna have to do more of the regulation of my temperature with the amount of wood that I put in the smoker. Jose, howdy. Uh, Jimmy says, Dash, is this the point with your fire? You can uh, go take a nap if I need to. Pretty much, definitely. Quentin, how you doing this evening? So pretty much, Jimmy. But the thing is, I wouldn't do that necessarily because of the fact that this, this cooker is still a little too unpredictable. Uh, like right now, my fire is climbing at 325 degrees, or my, my temperature is climbing at 325 degrees. Now, with that being said, one of the reasons why I think it's climbing so high is because obviously I put more wood in there, but I, if I use two splits as opposed to three, I don't think this would be a problem. But it is good to know that I can get the temperature up that high. Uh, gives you the text says dash I came in late but had to remind to catch up. I'm just part of you uh, for my family and friends for catering. I enjoy watching your channel. Well thank you. Oh crap, you know what I didn't do? 
I started editing tomorrow's video and I never finished editing it. I got caught up with some work and then I never finished editing the video. So when I go inside, I'm going to have to edit the video. So I'm sorry guys, those of you guys who are here and normally get to see the video for tomorrow early, that's not going to happen. I did not finish editing the video. Still holding at a 50 degree difference there. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not 50 degrees anymore, it's 75 degrees. Oh, this is on this side, we're at 325, and on the right side, we're sitting at about 250. So, as the temperature increases, the variance in temperature increases. <clears throat> okay, we're all better now, Gabriel. Cheers, salud, my bro. Uh, while watching the smoke pour out in front of your firebox, I try to think of ways to, uh, to get to draft, be, uh, to draft better. So the whole thing is it's not going to draft better. And this is one of those things that being here, being here and looking at this, I can see it's not going to draft the way you guys think it's going to draft because of the fact that the inlet is on the far side of the firebox and the heat smoke travel across the short way on this firebox. In all actuality, it probably would be better to have the firebox door on the end and the firebox to be longer. But because I don't have a longer firebox and because the firebox is not on the end, I actually prefer the firebox to be in the front because, as you can see, I have space constraints. Those of you guys who don't have space constraints can have your firebox poking out of one end and the door be on one end. I can't have that. I actually need to tend to the cooker to the fire all in front of it. So this works best for me in my situation. It doesn't work best or as well for other people. But when I open this door, the heat and smoke come out the door this way and don't travel into the to the fire. It's, it doesn't draft well enough. It's like the heat and smoke go in and they're like, oh, there's, a, there's an easy way to get out. We're going to get out over here. And it comes out through the door. So that's why I always try to keep that door closed um, and, and, and close it as quickly as possible. All right, user said, I wonder if you like some water the newspaper is just below the exhaust tube. Inside Bernadette with both doors closed, it will promote better drafting while you are getting the fire started. So, geezer, I don't know if you saw this when I started up the fire. I always opened up the doors to promote as much draft as possible. Um, that was kind of, I won't say the way I was taught, but that's kind of always been the way that I, I've done it. I don't know whether or not having a smaller fire inside will help with that or what, but that might be something um, I could think about. Do you think changing the exhaust tube angle to 45 degrees rather than a 90 might help with drafting? Uh, what about adding an additional vertical extension to the end of the exhaust tube? So, geezer, very good questions. I have not thought about doing much of anything with the tube because honestly it has not been a problem and where it is with the 90 it works out so that it sits I don't know if you can see yeah there's there's a brick that the that the exhaust sits on and it sits pretty much level that is a six inch elbow to a six inch round four foot diameter piece of black stove pipe and it has not been an issue uh, I can't say that if it were a different angle, it might be better. I do not know. But if it were neck down or if it were more restricted, then I think it probably would be a little better. But I don't think that that's a problem. Uh, Dash is in his couch in the zone. Uh, badass chef. What do you mean? That is in his couch. So, temperature on the left side is getting closer to 350 degrees. <laughs> temperature on the right is creeping up almost at 275. Mm. Hell, Laura, nothing. I'm going to bed soon. Have you switched the thermometers to make sure? No, I haven't. But those thermometers, those are tell, -through, tell true thermometers. And 
I'm gonna say they're never wrong, but they are rarely ever wrong. Um, but I have not switched them. So that's something to think about. Now you got me new thinking, Ross Banks. So if anyone asks to tell through the monitor, or at least these, one side was barely on, and the other one was tighter than, than the day is long. Okay. All right, let's see. In case you're wondering again, this is seven eighths. It's the size of the nut. This one on the left is at almost 325 degrees, and the one on the right is at almost 275 degrees. Uh, Sarah says I'm thinking about making a video of some of our build uh, journey and our hangar for you guys. Would anyone watch it? Not for the or anything. Just think you guys are pretty cool. Well, thanks, Sarah. Definitely. When or if you actually start a channel and start filming, let us know. I will let everyone else know and then we can we can check you out. Alright? Everybody has to start somewhere. I'm so sorry I'm, I'm like winded and out of breath. I, I I'm so like you know when you're coughing and you like I'm sore from coughing. Like oh it's the worst. Sorry reading stuff for tomorrow. Hey uh who's through the window? Pork. Okay. What happened to the Elvis pit? It's behind me. Uh, this up the air. All right. Third coast. Smoke meat says, "Hey, that's glad I caught you live." Yes. Put down the fashion in court. Yeah. No, the beer didn't get warm. I, I, I don't. I'm almost done the beer. Hmm. Beer was still cold. <laughs> that was a good idea to switch the thermometers. Yep. Uh, Sarah says uh, we love you, Dash. Well, thank you. First hundred subs are the hardest. Yes, indeed. So, Russ, I've switched the thermometers, and same result. <clears throat> um, 
I used to think the same thing with Vicky. I had a temperature fluctuation. It's more like 75 degrees from the top to bottom. It's ridiculous. And I did actually switch the, the thermometers in there one time to see if, if it was just me or pop was going crazy. And it wasn't. It, that is actually, you know, the difference left to right. So I will, however, I'm not going to add any more wood. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to take this wood that's down at the bottom and I'm going to add it to the, to the coal bed. But I am going to, I want to say thank you to you guys for hanging out with me for sure. Um, really appreciate you hanging out. And oh my gosh, it is hot in there. Good golly. Let's see what the temperature is inside of that fire box. It says 919 degrees right there. I think the max temperature is 919.5 because that's what it's reading in multiple places. And the heat that's coming off of this thing is ridiculous. Woo! All right, so now, actually, what I'm gonna do is choke off the fire and see if that creates dirt and smoke. Because if it does create dirt and smoke, then I know that I need to get some oxygen. Okay. Alright, we're going to choke it off. Two and a half dots is open. We need to expand it. Alright, so we'll choke it off and see what happens. Everything seems to be pretty well lit. And fire looks pretty good. Sarah says if I had a five sub, I'd be happy. Just uh, like watching you guys. I want to share a few things. Love feeding people and sharing. I'm excited to open my food trailer and travel with my business. That's what's up, Sarah. Best of luck to you. Alright, so let's see if the temperature rolls back some. Grumpa said it really, it is really amazing the uh, temperature difference and just the footage too, for sure. For a while I got frustrated that I had some indicator and ideas and people would always choose my barbecue after a while I just embraced it. Yeah. The fire will balance itself out uh, if you don't choke the damper too much too quick. Yeah. It's still. Well, I won't say counterintuitive there, but I added wood to the fire, but then also choked it off. So the fire, right now, I'm trying to watch it to see. It is dropping ever so slightly, ever so slowly. Uh, Darnell says, hey, uh, Grumpus, Laura, this is the way you do it, sir. This episode should be called Training Your Pit, yeah? How to Train Your Dragon. All right, definitely. Uh, I've been here from the start, just doing work while listening. Well, thanks, I know I appreciate you, man. And the temperature is definitely coming down ever so slightly, ever, ever so slightly. So if you're ever in a position and you need to cool your smoker down quickly, one of the first things or one of the things I tell people, open up the doors on the smoker. Easiest way to cool off the smoker, cool off the cooker. Um, also, another way to cook, cool off the cooker is going to be to add more water to it, um, but I don't know if you guys can see the temperature difference between the two thermometers. I'm going to bring you guys in closer. <clears throat> I will. Bring you guys in closer. And hopefully you guys can see the thermometers there. All right. So I'm still looking down at my phone though. So this one is at uh, like 25, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So 25, 30, 35, 40. 
so 340 degrees and this one is at like 385 all right let's see Darnell thanks for joining us Jimmy says gonna bounce dash hope you feel better good night guys yes yes burp the heat yep don't hurt yourself Jimmy yeah, bye for now. Good night. Take care, Jimmy. Good night, Jimmy. That's crazy to tip swing. Uh, I'm only 20 degrees on my cabinet. Yeah, well, the insulation, man, it, it, it really it really does a number. No, these are not oil-filled gauges. The gauges that are on Bessie are oil-filled. And, um, yeah. What if you moved your exhaust stat to the far side of the firebox? Yeah, I can't because this is a offset. Uh, this is a reverse flow smoker. Um, if I did that, all of the heat would escape straight up that smoker. Or uh, straight up and out. Uh, Hadesh did it. Now I hear sirens. I'll tell you, you guys laugh when I talk about um, the fire department being called and things like that. And it is a real fear Every single time I start a cooker, even when I'm cooking on, excuse me, on a cooker, cooking on the side of my house, right now, yes, this is a reverse flow smoker. The heat and smoke travel underneath the cook chamber and exit out that way. There's a water pane down at the bottom of this cooker, right now. Uh, but yeah, Mike, I tell you, I worry every single time. And actually, if you saw earlier. Somebody said something about, oh no, the fire department is going to be coming. I did not call the fire department before I started my fire. Usually, I'll call fire communications and say, hey, you know, hey, this is Dash. I have a, a barbecue company. The, the folks at uh, Engine 8 and Truck 30 have asked me to call you and let you know when I'm starting a fire so that if someone calls in the vicinity, you can send one vehicle to investigate as opposed to 10 units. Well, uh, Sarah says my dogs just stopped howling. They heard it too. Trust me, I hear it. I won't say I ignore it, but I I kind of detune it. Like I, I I zone it out a little bit. One, because I hear sirens quite often and regularly around here, and two, because I feel like every time I cook, I hear sirens, and and I will like if I start a fire. And then I hear the sirens. I will go up to the top of the driveway and and see if no, that was a dog. I do run up to the top of the driveway and see if um, I hear and see them. I don't know why that dog is crying like that. Ah, Russ said, "Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do?" It makes us run. <laughs> Yeah, I saw you pointed one around California as a man. I know. Listen, are you under uh, cottage food? Uh, is it just to prove? How does that work there? Um, yeah, Sarah, that way. Mm hmm. So, the cottage law in Maryland only applies to baked goods. So, I try not to answer those questions on purpose. Uh, because, because, uh, yeah. Hey, if you haven't already hit that thumbs up button for me, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could. So thank you guys so very much for joining me on this live fire. The temperature on this left side is still at 300 or it's at 335 degrees. And the temperature on the right is, it has come down a little bit. It is at uh, 200 and... 85 degrees just about so it is coming down but it's definitely not evened out I think one of the other reasons why the temperature is starting to come down uh, is the water is probably running out if I had to I would say yes but
There it is. <laughs> so that's the same here. A little bit of the F, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. Grandpa says dash be bacon meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarah says those are glorious baked goods. Yes, indeed. Uh, Laura, I'm not cooking anything tonight. I have some chicken and some pork shoulder I need to do on Friday into Saturday. And I still am not 100% sure on how much of it I'm going to do. Tomorrow is Thursday. I'm kind of going to finalize, I won't say the menu, but I'm going to finalize what I'm going to charge the school for me to cook this, this, this food for them. So far I have 100 pulled pork sandwiches and about 50 chicken sandwiches. And I, my plan was to do like either a six ounce or an eight ounce portion plus coleslaw and potato salad. So I've been trying to debate on what exactly I was going to do. The potato salad and the coleslaw, so far I have basically 150 portions. Um, the potato salad containers come in an eight pound container. If I do two ounces, I just need to do the math, reverse math for that, and figure out how much each I need for those. Now one of the things also with this cook and this these portions, I have to do the 100 pulled pork sandwiches and the 50 or so chicken sandwiches, but then I also have to have food left over or on hand so that people from the church, when they get out of church, they can purchase uh, food as well. So it's one of those things where I kind of need to know, I kind of need to figure out exactly how much extra I'm going to cook. Mike said, and hanging outside in your garage, uh, you've Da, 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 da. Have you tried running it without water for better results? Um, so yes and no, Darnell. The problem when I don't run it with water is because of the fact that the heat and smoke travel underneath, they heat up the bottom of the smoker and all of the everything that drips down on there, it puts a rancid, like uh, the, um, a really bad burning grease scent in, in the air and on the food. So that's why I always run it with water. Mike said, you need to get a sign saying, I'm cooking, no worries. Yeah. Uh, have you tried? Yes, I have. So the problem, Mike, is, again, when they send the the trucks coming, when, they, when the fire engines and stuff are coming, there's um, two pumpers, two ladders, an ambulance, Two police officers, a battalion chief. There's ten units. I'm not sure if I if I have that correct. So two, four, five ambulance, battalion chief, two police officers, and there's two more or something else. And I'm not sure if it's maybe three ladder trucks and two ambulances. But there's 10 units that respond to a dwelling fire. Ask me how I know. Uh, Laura. This cook might go viral with a single hot dog. Yeah. Hey, Meigs, thank you very much. Meigs, you know what's so funny? I found like half of that box. I moved some stuff around. And there's half of that box still, still waiting to be used. I told you my wife limited how much sauces I could put into the refrigerator at one time. So we have to use up X number of bottles before we can put another one in the refrigerator. Uh, but still want to say thank you. I uh, smoked mac and cheese with the jalapenos. Turned out better than I thought it would. Yes. Uh, Sarah, um, there was somebody on here, Kirk, earlier. He smoked some. He does, actually he does cornbread with macaroni and cheese with um, jalapenos. And his cornbread is pretty good. Speaking of which, he gave me some cornbread and I actually did a video and I never edited it. Edited it, 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 it. We have a pipeline, one building down for me. They had six trucks show up. Six? That's nothing. 
start my barbecue business and then we're looking for co-workers doing plate lunches monthly any advice on growing my business take it one cook at a time man nick um it's uh it'll it'll grow itself man uh, let the food speak for itself like i'm not trying to tell you to be complacent or just like do the bare minimum but don't bite off more than you can chew before you can you know before you have teeth let's put it that way um one of the things that, that I know I did with my business is it grew organically. And as people started asking me to do things, I would not tell them no. And then I would figure out how to get it done later. Is that always the best way to go? No. Um, did it work for me? Yes. Uh, so definitely, definitely uh, would, would suggest or, or say that I'm sure you can... Uh, you can get it done. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of getting it done, basically. Um, uh, Laura says we, our excuse me, Sarah says we have an extra fridge, mostly for sauces. Uh, Grumpus, they have. Uh, there was a time when they came in here and saw what I was cooking, and they bought a brisket from me that that day. That was years ago, though. Yeah, I me, mean, he's definitely enjoying the sauces. Beer and something in the driveway. Freaking beer, I'm sure. Alright, guys. Ah, uh, my local fire department and MT services. I'm my best customer. Yeah, B. Nick, God, uh, let, let the word of mouth. I do the heavy lifting, it's free, sure enough. Ooh, so once the fire department shows up, they want barbecue from that. Yeah, they did. Sarah says she started with cakes, and then basically her barbecue did better than her cakes. And then she she listened to her customers, and she doubled down on her barbecue. And I'm sure the cakes would be a nice addition to your barbecue. Um, and you might be known for your barbecue and your cakes, but she wanted her to be known for her uh her cakes. Russ said baking is a science. No, it's baking, Russ. It's baking. Uh, I probably made 50 Teenage Mutant Ninja uh, cakes. Nice. Who's your favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Sarah? Word of mouth is always the best uh, best for business. Yes, indeed, Mike. I mean, because it doesn't cost you a thing. That's why. People say, oh, how much did you spend on advertising? None. The only advertising budget I have is business cards. And that's because I was out somewhere and I was ear hustling. Or I was out somewhere and someone said, oh, you know, you do barbecue because they were talking to someone. And I'm like, yep, here you go. Here's one of my cards. That's it. I'm doing cheese filled jalapenos, wrap with brisket and bacon as an extra for this guy this week. So, uh, Nick, here's something about me. I don't like giving out free food. I don't like doing extras. I don't like doing, I don't say favors, because what ends up happening is people start to expect that. So I would tell you to limit that and just tell people like, look, um, the food's going to cost money. Like I can't, I can't give you everything for free. I can't give you something for free every single time you place an order. And people are understanding. And the people who don't understand that, you don't want them as customers. Which turtle? There were four different turtles. But everything has to be precise. Yeah, bacon is bacon. Spend money on delivering samples to local businesses instead of internet advertising. So B has the exact opposite advice. I don't know. My experience has been people who get something for free are only going to want something for free. Now, I also did not give out very much food for free because I didn't want um, a whole bunch of beggars. Uh, I'm going to go okay. I love smoked peppers, yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Well, Dick said he's paying for them, then game on. <laughs> game on. Dude, don't let the, you know, don't let me stop you. All right, guys, it is 11.30. I am feeling under the weather, and I have to get up early for work tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and end it. I really want to say thank you for joining me. And in case you were wondering...
this left side is sitting at 325 degrees. The right side is sitting at just over, just over 275 degrees. And I'm going to back the camera up and lower you guys down so you can see in the firebox. Show you guys the fire. splits and put them inside of the fire box. Sorry, my column here fell down in the gut in front of the smoker. Now I'm asking. sitting on that firebox for a good hour, hour for two. Um, I think it might, I think it might do better just putting them in the bottom of the firebox. What do you guys think? Uh, let's see. No, I don't know. Oh. Uh, Sarah says April was her favorite. All right. You boys, since I'm in the house, good content. Thank you, sir. Uh, Laura says good night. Kevin says hey, Dash, curious. Where you will wear your barbecue shirt from? Any recommendations on a t shirt brand? I like to place an order soon for some shirts with my brand. Thanks. So, Kevin, um, what I'm going to need you to do is hit me up on Instagram Steel Drum Smokers. So if you want the shirts that everyone calls the bowling shirts, the ones that I have now, the, these these definitely look more professional. Um, but they have a they're embroidered shirts. The other t-shirts I had made uh, from a local company, a local guy. So um, kind of can go from there. Just just DM me on Instagram, and I'll try to give you some direction. Take the wood off the top. Yep, yeah, I already did, Laura. Um, thank you. Thank you for taking us behind the scenes. Sure. One more one BRB. It's not that kind of bullshit. shirt. Yeah. Why do we instead of spending a couple hundred bucks on advertising the best, that to open the doors to your community? Yes, indeed. Rest in that show tonight. It comes up. Uh, feel better, Dash, and everyone have a great week. Laura. Yep. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty safety conscious, Laura. But thank you very much for the reminder. I'm not to have another beer. Shoot. All right. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Stephen. Uh, Stephen posted a link to my Instagram page there, so you can uh, shoot me a direct message or a DM, and I can hopefully answer your question about where you can get your shirts. So, if you want a simple T-shirt. Honestly enough, uh, you can probably find somebody in your local area to do them. If you want the same, uh, like I said, as they call the bowling shirt, like I have, I have, a, you know, I have a guy, 
All right, that will do that for you. All right, Russ said, okay, one more beer. I'm with Russ. I know I like Russ. Hopefully I wasn't breathing too heavily in you guys' ears tonight. I really, I really do feel under the weather. And I won't say this is a struggle, but talking and moving around. All right. Well, I'm very glad to see and know that I can get the temperature even with smaller splits, up higher. Take a look in here. Quick. And that, that cold bed isn't too, too bad. And the, those splits for the air isn't too, too bad. I really think the reason why the temperature is up so high because that water is, is um, evaporating off. Hey, B-Boy. Thank you, sir. Dash is the man. Hit that thumbs up button. Have you heard of armor of an arbitrage triangle? Uh, I'm three years in, <laughs> and I'm trying not to laugh because I will then start coughing. Grumpus says, "Cheers to everyone with a beer in their hand." I'll cheers to that. Mm hmm. Hmm. Wait, Grumpus, you should have said. Drink, <laughs> because I'm sure there are folks that have drinks in front of them or around them or whatever. So, drink. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Really, thanks for hanging out. This was more of a fat finder mission. It's just one of those things where I knew I needed to do this, but didn't set a time or couldn't set a time to actually do this. This being a test cook. Russ says, cheers. Ben says, salud. Ben, salud. Is that the key left point? Ben? Mm -hmm. This one, and I'm going to go to bed. Like I said, I am beat. Mm -hmm. Can't say thank you guys enough for hanging out with me. Really, really, really do appreciate it. If you have not already, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. <laughs> Again, I do appreciate it. If you guys, you guys have any other questions or anything for me, shoot, now that I think about it, I gotta go back in the house and I gotta finish. I gotta edit the video for tomorrow. Damn it. Sorry. So sorry. I try to make sure I have those videos done. But me not feeling well. I started doing the video and then I got sidetracked with work and then I never went back to it. I never circled back to it. But I'm like more than three quarters of the way done with the video. I just have to add the ending and then I have to add um, I have to render it and upload it. So Raising my glass of bourbon to your beer. Thank you. B. B. Absher. All right. Thank you, B. Really appreciate that. I. Uh, it's funny. I told you guys I'm try I was trying to learn the bourbon, and uh, I found of the bourbons I have, I like the old Pappy. I like, but like I like old Pappy. But I don't get all of the hype behind Old Pappy. I have a bottle of Old Pappy. I mean, I like it because it's really smooth. But I have had a few bottles of Blanton's. And I won't say I don't like it, but I like E.H. Taylor more than I like Blanton's. Um, yeah. <laughs> B's throwing up a couple beer signs. <laughs> That's what's up. Thanks, B. Uh, but I'll drink stuff like I've drank. Drinking, drunken, 
Eagle Rare, uh, Buffalo Trace, uh, Angel's Envy. I mean, I, I would say I did my fair share, but I, you know, I bought a couple bottles. They're very hard to get both of them. Uh, E.H. Taylor and or Old Pappy, well, I just so happened to be in the Costco on the day where they got it in. And I was like, yep, I'll take one of those and one of those. Yeah, I was looking to say a rich yeast cake. Yeah, I'll let you guys know how, uh, how it goes, I guess. A savory cheesecake. Ooh. Well, if you smoke it, Laura, well, I guess if you put it into the to a pie pan, if you smoke it, everything's going to kind of melt and congeal into the, you know, just put a flavor on it at that point, I guess. Because you cook it, then you cool it. So that's probably really good. Never had E.H. Taylor? What? E.H. Taylor, in my opinion, is better than Blanton's. Like, better than Blanton's. And people say, Blanton's is, oh my gosh, you know, like, I have a bottle of, I have a bottle, no, I think I made it up today. No, I have a bottle of Blanton's that I could turn around. Like, I, I think I paid $60 for the bottle. I could turn around and sell for 100 And somebody wouldn't blink an eye. Oh, I spent $100 on the bottle. So, excuse me. I don't think it's that impressive. Some of my ideas really aren't. <laughs> no problems there. Uh, he said I need to put out more videos. Just too lazy to edit. edit. I understand. I, I definitely understand, Brian. Um... It's sometimes it's not about being lazy. It's like, what is your time better suited doing? That that's what it boils down to. And if you can, you know, do something. Russ says, "Do you like playing horseshoes?" I have friends that do. I don't. Actually, just. Played cornhole really for the first time about a month ago, maybe. Like to understand how it was played and actually dug it. Lawrence says, Make it your own, Sarah, and change things to your liking for sure. Sarah says, All the time, sure enough, I can imagine. And did you peep it? I peeped it, Sarah. She's taking her baking and involving it with the barbecue to, to, to mesh, to mash both worlds. Grumpus says, I like the edit process. I have uh, a hard time finding the time to do it. So, I don't necessarily care for the editing process. So, what I do is I film to how I edit. Some people just film everything and then they have to edit everything. I don't film everything. I film certain pieces, certain clips and things like that. So when I'm, when I'm editing, I know that, okay, hey, this piece that I filmed, I can speed that whole clip up. Or, uh, excuse me, or I find that when I'm editing, I don't necessarily have to do so much. All right, let's see, I just got a DM on Instagram, so hopefully that's uh, it was, it's a chicken shack. Hopefully that was you, sir, who asked me about the shirts. I will check it once I get off of my phone. I'm using my phone to broadcast this live stream. All right, so, is it 12 o'clock yet? Nope, it's 11.45. Uh, that's how I feel right now. Oh. Man, you sound so tired. I am. It can save you hours. Yeah, Grumpus says you have to film with the edit in mind. But you know what, Grumpus? It's such a simple thing to say, but it's not a very simple thing in practice. Because some people understand what you mean when you say that, and other people don't. Um, so, but I film to edit. And not edit what I film. Oh, yeah. 
Sarah, I, I tough this one out because trust me, I thought I was not going to do a live stream today and I said, all right, well, what can I do that won't be like me just sitting? Because I figured if I was sitting still in the house, I'd be asleep. That's why I'm out here at the smoker because this is way more dynamic and obviously I am, I am wide awake. Uh, well, I am awake, not wide awake, I am awake. Uh, so yeah. He said, I'm prepping for a huge event on the 10th. Almost 5,000 people. It's a big tax on time. Yeah, well, Jesus Christ. 5,000 people? Man, 5,000 people. Jesus. I ain't mad at that one. Get your money, bitch. Get your, get your paper. For sure. Alright, guys, I am gonna. I'm gonna. That's why I try to do a few dash. Yeah. And prepare for the huge rental and say, okay. Yeah. Because if I were sitting in the house tonight and, you know, we were just talking, I would have been asleep by now. Like, I know I would have been asleep. Especially if I was drinking, like, drinking some shine. I'd have been like, I probably would have fell asleep on camera. You know how, that, how well that goes over. Laura says bye for now. Good night. Take care, everybody. Girl this is dang Brian, how far in advance you need to start cooking? It's cooking now. <laughs> Pretty much. It's cooking now. You gonna vacuum seal stuff, dude? What you gonna do? Vacuum seal it, freeze it, and warm it back up. Day of or day before of the event. 5,000 people, that's a lot of damn food. Uh, this is days. <laughs> days. Man. Alright. So, the... One of the things that I'm noticing here... So we got some... What's a dirty smoke? I can smell it. bitter. But one of the things I think I'm noticing, I don't like the mother. I, I know I've, I've, I've said that before. In, in uh, But also, that smells a little little bitter. It might be because that, that, that wood was, was uh, it's still wet. Um, when it discolors and it gets like this, so this piece here was probably one of these pieces, and you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but how discolored it is, that's good and dried out. So let's just chuck this in the fire and see if it catches. See, the problem is there's no active fire in there right now. It's just a coal bed. That piece of wood ignited pretty quickly, so it was rather dry. Versus the other splits that I put in there, they had to be dried out in order to actually catch quickly enough for it to actually do something. So, all right, posted on our Instagram. DJT. Ty said, so dang, I just jumped on. Do you have a barbecue tour you want to go on, like, reason-wise? Um, Austin. Austin is, like, my favorite barbecue destination. There's so much good barbecue in Austin. And it's such a cool place to be, in my opinion. I like Austin a lot. So, anytime someone says, hey, where do you want to go to bar for barbecue? I'm always going to answer Austin. Um, I have some great friends in Austin great memories in Austin from when I worked in Austin. Um, before I started doing barbecue, Austin is why I got into barbecue. So all roads to me lead to Austin uh, for me. 
because Austin is where I, how I got my start. Nice. That's what's up, B. We just got two 500 gallons we'll be cooking on. That's what's up, man. Good luck with your cook, B, for sure. Um, uh, Grumpus said, I know a great place in San Leon. Well, I'm going to have to keep that in mind, Grumpus. All right, guys. I am. It's close enough to midnight. I was trying to let it go for three hours. But we're, we're nine minutes shy. I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, let me check the temperature real quick. 250. Oh, that's 300. 350. 341. Now, the door there is 95 degrees. In the center there. Oh. In the center, it's at 195 degrees. So, the, 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 the temperature is creeped up from the outer edge into the middle. See the door here? 210, 209, 210. So all of this is just heat soaked at this point. 122, 125, this door, 109, this door, 98. Let's see this edge here. 121, this edge, 147, in the middle where the heat smoke are escaping, 170, this I can see the, the ripples, the heat ripples coming off of this. And I can feel the heat coming off of this. Uh, but pretty cool. So let's see, take out the side here. 264, and I think some of that is the heat coming from the inlet here, out and around this corner with this edge. 305, 322. So this leading edge is a little warmer, a lot warmer, because this is not a perfect seal. So some of that heat and it's, it's coming up past that. Um, but the door is still pretty cool. All right, guys, I am gone. Todd says, uh, I'm in Waco. I hope you make it. And then before you come back, I meet up with you. I have Shade Waco Bar soon. Awesome. It's way up there, though. Yeah, I know. What's she bought though? Come on, man. What are you doing coming in here? Um, it's already, I've already been streaming for three hours and then you come in here and I'm like trying to, to, to sneak out. He says, hey there, gents, people. Man, oh man, I gotta go to bed. <clears throat> I'm not feeling well and it's time for me to go to bed. Guys, I, I want to say thank you so very much again. If you have not already, please hit that thumbs up button for me. I greatly appreciate it. Really does help not only me feel better about doing these videos, it helps these videos and it also helps my channel. And it doesn't cost you guys a thing. Um, tomorrow's video, I want to say it'll be up tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern, but it might be late. Like, it depends on how I feel when I get up inside the house and I sit down at my laptop. Uh, Girl, Mrs. Dash, get you a fifth of night quill and go to bed. Shoot. Man. Uh, Russ and that will edit. Damn it, Russ. Thanks for being the, the voice of reality, the voice of reason, more or less. All right, I'm getting up and I'm going to go and uh, I gotta put this hose back out the window. I got some folks that I know that I don't. It can stay in here. I'm gonna stand out first. I need to use it tomorrow, but they're done. Alright. Thank you guys so very much. Alright, let's see. Oh my gosh. The comments are really, really behind on. Oh man, I'm showing 88 thumbs up on the man. That's what's up. Steven says get well soon. Thank you, sir. Grumpus says good night, everybody. Uh, Russ says good night all. Yes, Mushibato says 89. Yeah, the whole thing is I can't see from my from my work phone. I was using my work phone to to read the comments. I couldn't see 
what the like count was. So I didn't know. Um, somebody asked me about, um, so Priscilla and Bessie. So they're tucked away back here and there's Frida over there. I'm doing this over my shoulder. Frida's over there. Bessie's here. I have some boxes on Bessie and my log splitter there. So, all right. I think that's it. That's enough. I am going to, uh, I was going to say I'm going to go to bed immediately, but I'm not going to bed. I got to edit the video for tomorrow. Anyway, thank you guys so very much again. I am, I'm leaving for real this time. Um, I'll see you guys. Well, hope to see you guys in the comments of the video tomorrow. And I'm gone. Peace. It's time for another beer. No. Pushy Bottle says, oh, Bessie rules. I know, man. I know. So I'm, I'm trying to debate whether or not I want to sell Bessie as a shell um, and let someone else try to fix her up. But that's for another that's another topic for discussion. Anyway, thank you guys so very much. I'm gone.